Hello, uh, good evening. I'm Dr. Anil Guri and I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center. And today I'll be talking to you about another interesting topic and that is, does increasing the dose of FSH from a daily format really make a huge difference? Uh, and this is again a topic that is I'm quite interested in and I'm, and I'm a great believer that uh, the AMH and the anterior follicle count tell you a, a very very important picture and I tell you a, a very important and if you understand that picture uh, and I, th I think that you'll be able to get to a right diag uh, right treatment and I'll, I'll explain that to you a bit earlier but let's go through this paper and this was a, a, a this was a paper that was uh, uh, done in gynecology and endocrinology where they said that do poor responder patients benefit from increasing the daily gonadotropin dose during controlled ovarian hyperstimulation and here let's look at the basics you need to stimulate the ovary you need more eggs you need more follicles and what we know is that the FSH levels start rising from the first day and achieve a plateau and we think they achieve a plateau in about three to four days time and so there's a general plateau that is reached and here again what we're questioning is in a poor responder if you keep increasing the dose do you overcome the metabolic lag in blood FSH levels and lead more oocytes so what you're effectively doing is that if you increase the dose very very high and you effectively reach a very high level uh, of FSH then are we, are we just go going to push the FSH much higher uh, now I, I, I read somewhere that you know you are looking at even at the highest level you're looking at an FSH level that touches about about 20 milliequivalents per liter even if you push it very hard even if you give it any dose and I, we think that's the maximum it may be reaching there are many reports coming up which say that you know increasing the dose does not uh, improve site yield so I know this was the cases which were taken. So they had about uh, 900 cycles and they looked at those who had a very low reserve and uh, the, they effectively looked at what would be the, clinic, the clinical pregnancy rate and it was 7.5% uh, you know, uh, and that's quite low. And this is effectively of uh, uh, women who uh, had 450 of FSH and this, were, these ovaries were hit quite hard and, and effectively in these poor responders you hit a, the ovary very hard and your pregnancy rates continued to be very low. So they came across this, this concept to say well what happens if we give 600 and 450 and they divided this into two groups and the first group got 600 international units and the other group got 450 international units units and we looked at you know looked at the the results the clinical pregnancy rate was quite extremely low there's no difference in the number of oocytes there was a difference with pn pro nuclear embryos and they were lower in 600 a lower number of embryos were transferred when a dose was 600 and a higher number of cycles without embryo transfers happened in the 600 types of uh, poor responders the one and mainly i think they are young poor responders and older poor responders the younger poor responders tend to have a slightly different size of anterior follicles unless they're heading towards premature ovarian failure and at, and the older ones have smaller anterior follicles and that tells us a lot of a lot of uh, a mystery around it and i think we still we just don't understand how to uh, get good results from poor responders. So let's have a look at the triangle and the, when you look at the triangle uh, and I would say understand the uh, study look at the mastery in this, uh, of this triangle and try and understand where it comes from. You get follicles here and you've got follicles here and and what does it tell you and it tells you a very important story and it tells you a story that your Follicles here are easily responsive to FSH. Why? And as they start growing and as they start slowly coming up, you they, they overcome the inhibitory power of 
AMH. And these follicles are easily stimulated. And now this is my belief, and this is my belief probably I think will prove it right, is that when you put higher doses, you effectively reach the plateau very early. And I think rather than reaching the plateau in four to five days, you are reaching the uh, uh, plateau in the FSH rises and then it reaches a plateau within two to three days. So what happens then? Uh, you, you end up recruiting only one or two follicles. Uh, you want to get the best outcome. And I'll say go back to that triangle and you're going to go back to that triangle. You will see that some follicles which are, which are larger, they will respond even to clomiphene and they'll, they'll respond and give you a fantastic result with clomiphene. Why? Because clomiphene gives you a lower level of FSH. It takes longer to reach that peak and you are literally extending the recruitment window. And I think the couple of things which are, we need to concentrate on is how do you extend the recruitment window and that is essentially very important. Also, how can you extend the recruitment window in the follicular phase and where you can take an advantage of the, the nature's extended recruitment window in the luteal phase. So in summary, I can tell you that 450 and 600, I don't think 600 really works. And the dose of 400 uh, and 50 also is effectively a, a dose that is, has huge limitations. But that's something I, I, I don't think any of, us, any of us knows the right, uh, you know, regimes here. I, I am more likely to go for a mild stimulation depending on the size of the follicle and a maximum stimulation depending on, again, the size of the follicles. And I think it's understanding the nature. Uh, in older women, they are less granulosa cells and uh, they give a lower E2 levels and they stimulate quite badly. And I think age does have a significant impact. And sometimes you, you just don't get a, a good uh, response. But it's, any, it's, it's a challenge for all of us. And I, I think it's where, wherever you see. But I, I believe that the maximum doses often end up pushing some women to, towards repeated failures and, I, I, and should be avoided. And I think you'll be able to, I, and I'll do it in another lecture where I'll, I'll demonstrate and show you how to decide which patients you put on a, on a low dose therapy and which patients you push hard to get a response. But that's another lecture altogether. It takes slightly more, uh, more complex when we discuss those lectures. Uh, but thank you very much. Bye-bye.